Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and as most of you know, I fake my way through most of my videos. And this will be no exception because today we're talking about about fakes, and not just fake dollars, but uh, faked slabs. And so, for those of you who are longtime collectors, um, this is the type of thing that you're going to look at and just say, "Well, yeah, anybody knows that." But you got to realize, for someone who's new to the marketplace. Um, you know, this looks like a slabbed coin to them. All right, so we're gonna talk about a couple things. First of all, an NGC slab uh, shouldn't just come apart. I mean, that that is a telltale sign. So I'm gonna look at a couple things that are going on with the slabs themselves, then we'll look at the coins. Um, and uh, I'm gonna talk about a couple ways you can you can verify a, a coin, right? So some of the things, of course. Now, what they did here is they just kind of made a pattern off of the NGC holders, but it doesn't have the NGC logo to it. And then on the back, it also does not have the NGC logo. So they were kind of trying to do it in a way that is um, where they couldn't get in trouble because they're not technically stealing any of NGC's material because you know it's just a coin holder, right? So I think whatever company was making these, that's a part of their, their story. Um, but clearly the, the holder is designed to look like an NGC holder. Uh, you know, one of the things to look for in NGC holders is they actually are rigid. And most of their holders from the last decade actually has, have these little notches that go down here, uh, last maybe 15 years even now. But before that, those notches were not there, but they were rigid. So that is one of the things, of course, you wanna have the holograms, but, but after that, there are things that you can look at. now. What I'm about to show you is something that does not guarantee your coin is real because, um, well, because if someone is smart and they are nefarious, what they're going to do is they're going to take this certification number and they're going to match it up with something uh, with, with the coin in the holder, right? So NGC on their website has a certification um, verification. So you put this number in here without any hyphens. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's see here. This is actually supposed to be a 1708 East uh, Great Britain. Look at that. I mean, talk about being way off. They didn't even try to get it right. What it, What it's supposed to do is so if we look up this coin here that's actually the the real coin we're supposed to put in the certification number and then we're supposed to look it up and it's supposed to say hey here you go 19040 ms64 this one it actually has the picture of the coin here uh, which they don't always have but sometimes they do okay um, <clears throat> next we're going to look a little bit closer at the coins now now, the older generation of fake coins, um, interestingly enough, this actually is a pretty good looking 21 imitation, but most of those were magnetic. A lot of these old ones, and this one even has rust on the back, but a lot of these newer counterfeits that they're coming out with today um, are not magnetic, and they actually have a look about them that looks pretty decent if you just compare it to a Morgan you know, what they've done better is they're putting a solution on here that really gives it a tone or a color that looks a lot more realistic. Um, but, you know, the thing that you're always going to lose out on on these guys is going to be the details, which is to say, and, and once again, as you look closer at this coin, you'll see it actually has, you know, from this shot here, if I just showed you this shot and nothing else, you'd say, wow, that looks a lot like a Morgan dollar to me. One of the things that's always a telltale sign to me is the dates are always kind of wonky. You know, you look at that, look at the two, you know, and it kind of looks like an inverted five that somebody sat on. Um, then the granular finish also, the lack of detail, you have a lot of, of uh, detail that's missing on that coin. Uh, and not just from, I mean, you look at the feathers are gone completely and the coin's supposed to, this coin's supposed to look uncirculated, as you can see that the, it, their created luster goes all the way around. But once again, there's a there's a major lack of detail when you look at the real thing. 
next to these guys where you've just got a lot of flatness. But um, you know, for the average person who's really novice, these things can can get them and can can trick them. One of the things that is um, interesting about this group is that, for example, 1892 Morgan, it's actually supposed to be 920. <laughs> this one here, 1889, it's supposed to be a CC, but it doesn't even say it on the on the label up here, right? So once again, you'll see that it is lacking in detail. Um, there's just a soft, soft softness to all the lettering. And that's one of the ways, and this one also, which says 03, is actually an 030. So, you know, I think that there's enough things that are wrong on these that the, the company that makes them and sells them is probably like, well, look, it's clearly not what it says it is. Um, so you're just supposed to go ahead and, it's somebody else who's, who's hosing you, not us. So also, we're going to go ahead and um, let's see if I can get this here so we can see it or not because uh, or maybe I can't. Let's try again. So your, your Morgan dollar should weigh 26.73 grams. One of the things that they have done with these guys that is different is they're actually the weight is pretty close, 26.5 grams, 26.6. This is the old counterfeits, um, 21, 22. And you can see they've they've really worked. I don't know what metal they're using with the density difference. By the way, the other thing is the reeded edge, which you can't really see on this coin as well. This is actually a major tell on most coins is the way the reading is made. Uh, you see how the reading on the original Morgan on the far left, it comes to like a sharp point. And this, the hollow, this, the valleys. So, okay, so the peaks are like sharp mountains. The valleys are really flat. And you look at these, these two that almost look like gears where the, the valleys are really deep and are really flat instead of really sharp. And the mountains are really flat. So they come to like a mesa whereas the real one comes to like a point. So you can feel the difference in the reading. All right, now if that's not bad enough, this walked in to the shop recently. All right, so you know this is bright, shiny yellow and you think that those Morgans are mistakes if you buy them. Um, well, of course, based on the grades they were, they would have been huge mistakes. But here we have some fake Perth Mint stuff. Now these are a little easier to tell than some of the other stuff that you see on YouTube videos. You know, you see these YouTube videos that make you think that you can never buy a, you know, a gold bar anywhere and trust it. But one of the things I'm gonna show you, because there's actually one out of the holder here, is of course, as you put it down, it says 20 grams on it, right? But it's only weighing in at 18, which is interesting because one of the reasons I don't like bars and packages is because you know, it really can hide the overall weight problems that you're gonna have. Because here, 26.5. So if you get this in the holder and you look at the holder and you think, oh, that's pretty nice. Um, like, like most fakes, well, this one actually, um, there's a lot of things on here that are done really well. You know, they have um, the bar numbers on here, uh, the gold content, all of, all of the plastic stuff the packaging is is imitated very well. One of the things to note on gold bars when they're in packages, the gold bars are almost never thick. They're very thin relative to the rest of the piece. So a real gold bar because of the density of gold is almost half that thickness, right? So one of the things to look at, um, well, these guys, you only want to buy them obviously from a trusted dealer, but this is the, this is the type of thing that you could see on eBay because, you know, people shop on eBay and guess what? Uh, some people get, get hosed on eBay when they shop. I'm going to show you just real quick on the Sigma machine. The Sigma is a machine that we use to test a lot of gold. What people can tell you and which is true is the, um, some of this stuff is not 
th this machine's not foolproof. In other words, if you have a thick enough coating on these, uh, actual thick coating of gold, then what you'll find out is that it can be it can be f tricked, so to speak. So, you know, as an example, as I touch this to here with this with the thin setting, you can see it's going off to the side, which is you know actually really in interesting because it should have the air there goes the arrow there goes the, you want to see that arrow so this has probably a thin layer of gold to it but it should be in the brackets so these two brackets it should fall inside of those two brackets oh, now i'm testing the edge as i test the edge you can see that's exactly like a normal test so so depending on the surface and where you're testing this thing you know it's gonna it's gonna pop up here differently that's using the wand there's actually a thicker wand that i can use the main center is there's a tester right up front here on top so if i if, if i put this on top you can see that even here i always want to use the wand on this machine or get that straight edge because what happens is if if that is not that little green dot here is not touching the right portion of the surface then it's not going to show it exactly right so this machine is useful, but at the same time, you have to know how to operate it, operate it versus how the how these things are made. So when I'm touching the, the flat open surface, it's easy to get the right reading. When I'm touching a part of the surface, you know, up in here where there's design and it's kind of pushing the green dot away or the testing away from the surface of the bar, then it's not quite testing right. It's not in the brackets, but uh, well, I was doing it with the wand a second ago, that one. When it's not in the brackets like it should be, but it's it's going to the left and it's got the solid bar, which would actually fake somebody out if they just threw it on there like that. And they're like, oh look, well that looks like it's gold because it's not the arrow, because you really want it to show the arrow. So anyway, there's a whole lot of stuff out there that's not good. I don't ever want to give the impression that everything out there is fake. I just think that it's it's good to have the knowledge and to have some caution out there. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something today, and um, hope some of that was useful, especially for the novice the novice collector. You know, avoid some of this stuff. Um, oh, look at that! That looks kind of fun. And uh, just be careful out there. Buy from trusted uh, dealers, reputable people and stay away from um, OfferUp and, you know, any of these other places like that where you can find stuff just from some private seller. Uh, be careful on eBay. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.